Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be with you. Um, so here is uh, Caladrius Biosciences uh, in a nutshell. Uh, and my talk will be a little bit different uh, than the previous talks. Uh, we're a public company, uh, and we're also a company that has uh, accumulated a pretty significant body of uh, clinical evidence uh, in hundreds of patients and in, uh, in various clinical indications. We have two platform technologies, uh, CD34 cells uh, for ischemic tissue repair uh, and regulatory T cells for immune modulation. And um, I'm going to spend the uh, most of my time today talking about the ischemic repair technology. Uh, in terms of the company status, where um, we have a strong balance sheet, uh, we're financially stable and debt free with a pretty low cash burn. Uh, and we actually have several value creating events coming up in the next several months. On the ischemic repair front, uh, this technology is based on autologous CD34 cells. A landmark paper that came out in 1997 uh, by Takeyuki Asahara uh, noted that CD34 cells, in addition to their hematopoietic capabilities, uh, are also capable of stimulating the growth of the microcirculation. So a naturally, naturally occurring vascular repair cell and this triggered uh, research into preclinical studies and then ultimately clinical trials that I'll outline for you uh, to see if this therapeutic uh, could really be useful in patients. <clears throat> Essentially, uh, this technology is acknowledging the fact that living things need nutrients. If you're a plant, <clears throat> you need water. And actually, if you replace water, uh, you, your plants will regrow. That's a crude example, but in reality, uh, living tissue is no different. I'm showing you a mild example of critical limb ischemia with some gangrene of someone's toe. That's due to loss of the microcirculation in this patient. And if that microcirculation is restored, in this case with a dose of the patient's own CD34 cells, gangrene can heal uh, and the patient can actually be functional again and, and actually preserve that limb. <clears throat> Quickly, some of the preclinical evidence uh, and uh, mechanism of action. As I mentioned, this is a microcirculation repair cell. Uh, and so on the left, you see the heart of an experimental animal that has been induced to have a myocardial infarction. And on the right, uh, you can see what that heart tissue looks like after a, a dose of, in this case, human CD34 cells given to an immunodeficient animal. And what you can see is the repopulation of that heart tissue uh, with microcirculation. So that is the mechanism. Uh, reconstitution of the damaged and lost microcirculation. Interestingly, if you measure the CD34 cells in patients who are undergoing an ischemic event, let's say a heart attack, the ability of those patients to recover tracks very nicely with the ability of the patients to mobilize their own CD34 cells. And so what this graph shows is a study that was public, published in the New England Journal in which the investigators simply measured the circulating CD34 counts in patients who came in with a heart attack, followed them for a year, and noted that the ability to mobilize CD34 cells tracked with event-free survival. So if you're a good CD34 mobilizer after a heart attack, you do quite well. And if you're a bad mobilizer, not so much so. So this is a nice sort of piece of natural evidence, again, making the argument that this is the natural repair cell for ischemic tissue repair. So what about clinical evidence? This is a listing of, not a complete listing, but a pretty good listing of clinical trials that have been done to evaluate CD34 cells in critical limb ischemia, claudication, refractory angina, heart failure, uh, myocardial infarction. And you can see at the bottom there, total of 700 patients enrolled in clinical trials with 400 patient exposures. So not a bad track record. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's October. Uh, and it's getting towards the end of the meeting, and it's a little late in the day, so I thought I would try to entertain you a little bit with a baseball analogy. So if we look at those clinical trials and rank them according to their outcome, um, this is, of course, my opinion about these, but you can see 
Uh, for example, at the top there, a study that was done in critical limb ischemia patients that showed improvement in amputation-free survival. Well, that's the holy grail in critical limb ischemia management. And so if you can show a statistical improvement in amputation-free survival, I would call that a home run. And certainly the patients who kept their legs would call it a home run. So as we go down the list, um, you know, looking at the, at the other critical limb ischemia studies, there's a couple of doubles, a triple, a single. Uh, and you'll notice one there that says uh, that, that it was a single, but the runner got picked off first. And that refers to the fact that the former sponsor of this uh, program uh, decided to terminate a phase three study without looking at the data. So uh, the data was going in the right direction, but unfortunately this study was terminated. Caladris was lucky enough to, to relicense that, that data back, uh, and so that's how we're able to pick up this program sort of in the middle. So here's the, the, the baseball analogy. So a lot of people from Boston here, I'm sure, so there's gotta be some Red Sox fans. Uh, so Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez are, currently they have the best batting averages in baseball. Uh, and they're certainly vying for the MVP. Uh, so great batting averages, great slugging percentages, lots of home runs. What if CD34 cells were not a cell therapy, but you know a free agent? Uh, how would they compare to these really all-stars. Well, the CD34 cells have only had nine at-bats, that is clinical trials, uh, compared to numerous at-bats for these two baseball players. So it's not necessarily a fair comparison, but nevertheless, the batting average of CD34 cells is 1,000. In every clinical trial, they have shown better safety than controls and better clinical outcomes. So really never failing. So that's a pretty good batting average compared to these all-stars with a 346 and a 330 batting average, which is pretty darn good, too. What about slugging percentage? Well, sorry, home runs. Two, only two home runs in all those clinical trials. These guys have a lot more home runs, uh, but they've had a lot more at-bats. And then slugging percentages, the total number of bases divided by the number of at-bats, you know, that list that I just created for you, a slugging percentage that's unheard of, even though these guys are great. So the point is, that if CD34 cells were free agents, they would be really looking at a nice contract right now. A Couple of the indications that we're going after, critical limb ischemia. Uh, there've been some nice studies done by Japanese collaborators. You've seen the picture before, but if you look there, you see after a single dose of the patient's own CD34 cells, pain gets better, blood pressure in the toe gets better, oxygenation gets better, walking distance goes up, and ulcer size reduces. So they're healing their previously non-healing ulcers, which is exactly what you want to have happen. There's a, a laser Doppler image of an ischemic foot on the left, blue and cold. And at four and 12 weeks after a single administration of the patient's own CD34 cells, you can see that foot warm up very nicely. This scale shows the recovery of the patients from critical limb ischemia. So, you know, critical limb ischemia means one of two things. Either you've got pain at rest, usually means you have to take narcotics for pain relief, or you have a non-healing ulcer. And so when you become CLI-free, which is that line graph, uh, that means you're basically cured of your condition. So I would just point out that over the course of about a year, 80 to 90% of these patients, after a single dose of their cells, are cured of their CLI, and they stay cured for, as you can see here, out to four years. That is regenerative medicine. There's no way around it. We're now in a, in a pivotal phase two study in Japan, uh, taking advantage of the favorable regulatory environment that was created by PMDA and MHLW at the behest of the Japanese government. It's a 30-patient randomized study, uh, which if it replicates the findings that I just showed you that were generated in Japan, will be in a position to achieve a conditional, if not permanent approval, based on this relatively small clinical trial. And the, and the study's underway in enrolling patients right now. The other indication that we're pursuing right now is refractory angina. So this is the program uh, that was underway that I showed you, the phase three study was, was terminated prematurely. There have been three studies uh, done, a phase one, a phase two, and then that partial phase three. So again, um, we're looking at two-year data. So patients received a single dose of their own CD34 cells and were followed for two years. They remained blinded, as did the investigators, for that two-year period. 
the black line are the controls, the blue and red uh, lines are the two different doses of CD34 cells that patients were given. And you can see that for two years, the patients who received cells had a reduction in chest pain compared to controls that was statistically significant. Now you might say, well, you know, angina is kind of a soft endpoint. I mean, you can just take more nitroglycerin. I mean, the patients don't feel that way. But, you know, if you really want to be, um, you know, objective about it, you could say, well, you know, it's kind of a soft endpoint. But on the other hand, <clears throat> you know, that, that study also showed a mortality advantage for treated patients. So over the course of two years, and you can see those curves are separating, uh, the treated patients experience reduced mortality compared to their controls in these blinded studies. <clears throat> so where do we stand with this? Our, uh, as we licensed back this data set and the regulatory filings, uh, we were able to reactivate the IND, which had been inactivated, fortunately not withdrawn. Uh, we achieved an RMAT designation uh, back in June, uh, and we're planning a meeting with FDA uh, later this year uh, to talk about the plans to, to move this forward, hopefully towards licensing, uh, a licensing application. Lastly, uh, to quickly mention coronary microvascular dysfunction. So this is a condition in which the microcirculation is damaged, uh, and yet the epicardial, the big vessels that we can bypass or stent, are open. So, you know, we used to call this syndrome X because patients came in with chest pain and had normal-looking coronary arteries, and we hadn't figured out how to measure microvascular dysfunction yet. But this is actually, you know, if you think of, of diseases, um, you know, you've, everybody talks about the tip of the iceberg. This is the bottom of the iceberg. Almost everybody who has chest pain or any kind of ischemic condition has microvascular dysfunction, and we're just really sort of learning about that now, and, and we think we might have an opportunity to do benefit to a large number of these patients. So we're in a clinical trial right now at Cedar sinai in LA and at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, uh, administering CD34 cells to patients who have this coronary microvascular dysfunction documented by coronary flow reserve. So we're gonna objectively measure uh, and enter the patients based on documented microvascular dysfunction, give them a dose of their own CD34 cells, and bring them back in six months and see if we've repaired the microcirculation. As I mentioned, we have uh, quite, a view, quite a few events coming up. So here you can see the status of our clin clinical programs. We've got a you know, critical limb ischemia study, which is technically phase two, but could be pivotal. Uh, coronary microvascular dysfunction, which is a phase two study. Uh, and then the refractory angina program, which is somewhere between phase two and phase three, uh, depending on how the conversation with the agency goes. Uh, I should mention our regulatory T cell program, which is looking at uh, the ability of regulatory T cells to halt the autoimmune attack on the uh, pancreatic beta islet cells. Uh, we're in a state of equipoise right now. We've enrolled 110 patients, uh, pediatric new onset type one diabetics, and we're waiting in, on follow-up. We'll, we'll know something about the, the primary endpoint, uh, the C-peptide curves, uh, in the second quarter of, uh, of next year. So anxiously awaiting those data. And here's some of the events that we have coming up. We have our FDA meeting, top-line data in the diabetes study, top-line data in the coronary microvascular dysfunction study, uh, and then the top-line data in the Japanese CLI study. So all big events for us coming up over the course of the next 18 months or so. Our cash is pretty good right now. We've got a, a very nice financial situation. Uh, there are some of the other specifics of the financials. So to summarize again, we have late stage therapeutics uh, on two technology platforms and good financial sh shape and debt free uh, and lots of value creating events coming up in the next 18 months. And with that, I will thank you for your attention.